Hello there, isolators. Welcome to another video from Oscar Cooper. I hope you're all doing well. Just very quickly, Boris, I know you're a fan. I hope you get well soon. Let me know, bruv, if you want me to run anything round. Hairbrush, maybe. We are looking at Ark Survival Evolved. This is the Genesis new map pack that is available rather cheekily via the Season Pass, which costs $30. It's not available as a standalone pick. You have to buy the Season Pass. That's a bit naughty, but it's not too much money. And if you're as big a fan of Ark as I am, by the way, do you see all those, those map packs that I've got? Holy shit. And by the way, I'm gonna do that annoying thing where I show you a bit of the single player. Now these bugs, man. I'm 300 hours into Ark. These bugs, man. There's no need for them this early in game. It's basically one massive map that's divided into these biomes and you, it starts you in the swamp biome, but the swamp biomes build as the easy one, but the, it's riddled with insects, fucking riddled, and it's only until you get a powerful enough dinosaur to take them on are you released from their wrath. It does sport some new looks, slightly new looks. It's still got screen tearing everywhere and it adds this funny AI character with you that you access to do the teleporting around. So you can teleport to each biome whenever you want. I'll show you that in a second. But for me, Ark's always looked really good. I know it's janky as hell. Look at this, you can almost see the screen splitting. They always sort it out. It's probably because it's a new map. It, this is running on a Pro and HDR. So I'm not too disappointed. It is very colorful, especially this water biome. The maps have always been the stars of Ark and what is within those maps. Different creatures, different setups, different terrains, different crafting abilities. It's kind of the dinosaurs and the cool new creatures that I've come to this expansion for. Especially that dude on the cover who's like a werewolf. Right, two minutes. We're in two minutes, Coop. Show a split screen. So this is real time. So I've pushed options now and the game sort of has a freeze whilst it works out what's going on. Then you get your next screen come in now. <laughs> Just just forget about what you've been seeing on the graphical front. Let that go. <laughs> this is your world now. So it kind of glitches out on the top screen when the other player comes in. You know, it's a bit rough on entry. It's a bit like a budget version of Contact, that thing. But it works, okay, and stop sniggering everyone. It actually does look all right. It's not too bad. Now, what you've got to remember is this game's size and this game's ideas and possibilities. Colossal concept with Ark, and it's all for two people to enjoy on one couch. That's very important. Even though it falls and stumbles over graphically with trying to do this, it does it, and it works. So I'm not too sure if you guys saw that, so I've rewound it. Now look at this rock on the right hand side, well, on the left now of the top screen. Can you see that the bottom screen is kind of burnt onto that image? Now that's the weirdest thing I've ever seen in gaming full stop, and I'm sure there's some coding or some something in the background that can easily be fixed with that, but I noticed it and I want you to kind of watch out for it. Also, back to what I was talking about at the start, watch out for these insects they are just the bane of your life and if you're new to this game it's going to put you off it's only because i love this game so much that i push myself through to get past that insect bullshit now something else that this game is notorious for is having a jerkness on accessing the menus we'll call it borderlands 3 syndrome I tested it extensively and it is there quite badly. And of course, death also staggers the top. So it's the top screen that I want you to watch. There's some jerkiness and jankiness when the lower player is accessing their infantry menu, leveling up or doing anything. If you're communicating with each other, if you have allocated times when you both do this, it's not really a problem. And I do want to touch on the fact that I've done quite a few videos about how online co-op is especially brilliant the PVE, not the player versus player, playing as one on one team against all of these dinosaurs and creating your world quite literally around you is one of the best online experiences I had in 2019. It's absolutely amazing. And I'll probably do an ARC playlist and put it in the description because some of you may have not know anything about ARC. 
and look at the visuals now. They kind of catch up with each other. I think there's some scaling involved in the resolution. When the screen's really busy, the resolution will dive. To keep that frame rate smooth, I imagine, it's probably just a coping mechanism. But this looks really great. And I, but I want to emphasize that having two people on this game as split screen is not a perfect experience by any stretch of the imagination. And it would be something that I'd recommend if, if your mate came over and they can upload their profile and just help you out on your map. It's the other person is best had as a helper. I, it's not, I wouldn't want to ruin the experience by having your first time at, with Arc with just this tiny slice. I would only recommend this as a split screen mode if both of you know what you're doing and you want to get stuff done together and you haven't got two TVs and two machines, you know, because that's a very expensive way to play a two player game. So you can, as I mentioned before, teleport to the biomes and there's fire, there's lunar, there's arctic. There's the tropic swamp and there's the ocean, and they are vastly different. Interestingly enough, ling 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 enough, <laughs> the lunar surface has got some anti-gravity stuff, and I and it's pitched as medium to hard, I think. So I've not got to it yet to really experience if there's any new different elements and how that gravity will affect your combat, etc. Now, talking of combat, etc., when you do your warp you take whatever mount you're on with you and you take the whatever player was in this sphere and i was testing it to see if you actually take a dinosaur but look at look at who has to get involved in this situation just look at him so yeah the insects i have i have damn nightmares about them in in the original arc base game or in a lot of the other maps the insects are what's the word voluntary i.e you go to that area and experience them or you can create a repellent which is very far down that ingram tree and it also has some very rare and bullshitty committee elements to put to it and i can't remember they might have changed it anyway both dying at the same time can cause the system to almost fall over. I don't recommend it. So in conclusion, I secretly thought that it might have fixed some of the bugs that were all over the two player split screen version of this game and they haven't. But the flip side of the coin is, it's friggin' amazing to enjoy with someone else. These biomes are unbelievable and the new dinosaurs and monsters and you can see that slight increase in graphical fidelity. It's enough for me, it's okay. It's just don't march out there expecting this to be a perfect split screen experience. But if you own Ark and you haven't gone to Genesis yet, man, I totally recommend Bruv. And also if you're isolating and you want a deep game and someone to help you, this will do it for you, but the resolution won't, unfortunately. Headphone users, be dead!